So this is an electric field meter and it's called a body voltage meter and it's a rather odd looking contraption. And why don't we use just a regular field meter like the Cornette magnetic meter for magnetic fields? Why don't we use an electric field meter for electric fields? Well, it happens that the electric field meters are very expensive and the ones that are not expensive are not sensitive enough. They only go down to say one volt and we wanna look at millivolts. And so we want a more sensitive meter. Well, this happens to do that, uh, but in order to do that, you have to measure it a little bit different way. I'll show you how this works. Uh, I am a battery. If I'm sitting in a room that's got some electric fields, my body actually stores some of that voltage. And so, you know, you might say my body is, say, a two volt battery if there's two volts of electricity being absorbed in my body and stored in my body. And if I pick up this antenna and grip that, now I've created a conductive line, a circuit path into this meter. And then the meter will tell me how many volts is discharging through uh, this, this line and through the meter. And the reason it's discharging is because I've given it a ground circuit over here. And this is just a ground plug. And these blades here are just dummies. They go nowhere. There's only a thin wire out of this. And that comes from the ground plug. And you've got to make sure that your gr grounded circuit is truly grounded or this thing is not going to give you an accurate reading so there's my ground so when i pick this up boom the electricity goes out of my body into the meter and out through the ground because the ground is pulling that down out of me and it measures how much there is on the way and in this case we've got um, less than a volt here and when i pick this up we've got a couple of volts so we got almost two volts uh, 1.6 volts so there is some voltage that's being stored in my body and i want to look around and see what i can clean up in this environment the body voltage meter has four different sensitivity settings the high settings 200 and 600 volts are higher than you need for body voltage measurement for instance 120 volts is lethal and at those levels, you don't need a meter to know you're in some kind of trouble. The next setting scale shows fields up to 20 volts. This is a very useful setting to detect a wide range of common environmental electric fields, although this setting is best for looking at your higher exposures. The 20 volt setting gives you two places below the decimal point. So this scale shows you hundredths of a volt, tenths of a volt, and volts. It is good to get used to the term millivolts. Millivolts are thousandths of a volt. The 20 volt setting is not quite sensitive enough to show you single millivolts. The 2 volt setting is the most sensitive and gives you the most accurate reading of exposures under 2 volts. This gives you that third place below the decimal point. That position can show you 1 millivolt, a thousandth of a volt. Usually, we have a lot of electrical fields around us, so it's very common to get readings over 2 volts. When the 2 volt setting goes over limit, it looks like this. And then you need to switch up to the 20 volt setting to get your reading. Your ideal maximum exposures are explained by Aura Miller elsewhere in this video. Now we're going to start the first demonstration in the bedroom because believe it or not, when you're sleeping, you are 10 times more sensitive to electromagnetic frequency exposures than when you're running around uh, in your daily activities. The reason for this is that when you're sleeping, that is the chance that your cells have to rebuild and to do their recovery processes and they're going to be taking in nutrients they're going to be giving off waste and they're going to be rebuilding your body preparing you for the activities of the following day if you're exposed to electromagnetic frequencies while you sleep those cells are sensitive to that and they go into crisis mode they shut down and they don't replenish themselves and what you wind up with is quite often insomnia for one thing but the next day you'll be fatigued you'll be running your immune system down you'll be into premature aging uh, there are all kinds of threats to your health if your cells are not able to fully rebuild themselves so it's very important that you keep your sleeping area very clean of electromagnetic frequencies so Linda, what we're going to be doing is measuring electric fields in your bedroom here so that we can identify high electric fields and if they are elevated, then we're going to find the breaker or breakers that reduce that level for this room so that you can have a much more healthy and restful sleep and awaken with much more energy in the morning. All right, so what we're gonna be using here is the body voltage meter and this is available from uh, emfhelpcenter.com 
and we have this plug, which actually has nothing attached to the hot and neutral blade. It's just the ground that this wire is connected to. And we plug it into an outlet in the wall. In this case, this is a grounded extension cord. And we're going to plug in this tester and make sure that the ground is good, which it is. So we can get our accurate reading. And then we plug this in and we're grounded. And then that plugs into this hole here. And then in this uh, jack on this side, we plug in this banana plug that is attached to our antenna. Now, um, Linda, if you could step aside for just a second, I want to, uh, to the right here, I want to show uh, everyone that when you have a source of electricity here, then you actually will have an elevation of the electric field uh, level with this meter just by itself, because this is actually an antenna. But when you hold on to it, when a person holds on to it, then you become an extension of this small antenna. So I am now the antenna, and that's what we're interested in discovering. What is the electric field exposure that the whole body uh, experiences when they sleep? So you can go ahead and uh, pretend you're sleeping, Linda. Thank you. And hold on to this in your hand there. And we actually see that we have a level of 3,150 millivolts, which is three times the extreme level as far as the building biology profession is concerned of 1,000 millivolts. So the procedure is we actually measure the electric field levels with the breakers on, which we have now. This is our baseline. And then what we do is uh, I give the client a walkie-talkie and have this, them hold this in the same hand as the antenna. And then I go to the breaker panel, wherever that's located, and actually go through a procedure, which is very simple, that we will review with you very quickly. And that helps you determine what the electric field levels are uh, from which breaker. And so you know which breaker is elevating this electric field level. It's usually one or two, not just the breaker that um, controls the outlets in this room, but also uh, you may have a circuit that's underneath the floor here because remember the electric field comes six feet to eight feet out into the room up through the floor or out from the wall from the circuits that are there plus the cords that are plugged in around this bed. This by the way is in generally elevated level. We don't usually see levels at this high. But this amount of uh, electric field uh, exposure will actually uh, prevent you from making the melatonin and releasing the melatonin in the middle of the night and also dropping into stage four sleep every 90 minutes through the sleep cycles. What would a safe level look like on there? So a safe level on this meter would be 0 0.1 or less. That's our target goal. That's 100 millivolts or 0 0.1 volt because this measures in volts. And you, you also want to be sure that this setting here is in the two volts setting. But actually, we've exceeded that. So we have to move this into the 20 volt setting because we're over 2 volts, as you can see here, 3.2 volts. So it's typical to see readings that are generally 0 0.8, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0. That's the range that you're usually going to see. This is actually a little bit elevated because of the cords that are uh, plugged in under the bed here. So I would expect that the person who sleeps here, Linda, would have uh, more symptoms than the average person in terms of insomnia and difficulty sleeping and waking up in the middle of the night and not getting back to sleep. Now you might have a lot of electrical fields around your bed and this is going to disrupt your sleep. It could be coming from faulty wiring inside the walls. It could be coming from a lot of loose room cords and transformers. A lot of electrical fields coming off of that stuff and what you'd find then is you have insomnia, you have poor agitated sleep, you're waking up in the middle of the night, the next day you're tired and fatigued and dragging around all day. Well, the way you test for that is you go to your service panel and shut off the breakers that lead to your bedroom or through your bedroom. And so you're gonna sleep in no electrical fields at all. It's all shut down. And you're gonna see if you sleep better and if you sleep through the night, get deeper and better sleep. And if you're gonna be more energized and refreshed the next day. And if that's true, you definitely have some electrical exposures that you've gotta clean up. Now the wiring in the walls, may be just fine. It may be a lot of these room cords and transformers and junk strewn around the room. That's usually a common source of that. 
And one way you can clean that up without having to just unplug all your appliances is you get a little thing called a switch plug. And you plug that little unit into the wall and then you plug your appliance into that, but there's a switch on it. And you can switch your appliance off right there. So instead of turning your appliance on and off, it might be a light, a clock, radio, whatever. Instead of turning it on and off at the appliance, you turn it off at the wall. Now that cord no longer has voltage going through it. And that's what produces that electrical field. And even if there's a transformer down there, you've shut it off. And so there's nothing going through those wires. And that could clean it up. And that could give you a lot better sleep. So Orem is going to demonstrate that plug switch for you right now. So if you're fortunate enough to have metal clad wiring in your wall, then the only thing you need to do to mitigate electric fields where, where you sleep is to purchase one of these. And the way it works is you plug this into your outlet. You unplug your lamp cord from the outlet, plug this into the outlet first, then plug your lamp into the switch, and then you turn on the light up at the lamp. Then you turn the lamp off down here, leaving it on up here, and what that does is it completely eliminates the electric fields in this cord. When you're measuring electric fields in an office setting, the numbers that you're um, comfortable with can be higher than what you have in uh, the sleeping area. Here we have cords around us that will have electricity in them that need to be on during the day and evening time when we're at um, a desk and using a computer. But the idea is to minimize that as much as possible to keep the amount of voltage or agitating influence from these electric fields as low as possible during the day and evening when you're at your desk. So again, we're going to be using the body voltage meter available from emfhelpcenter.com. And so this is plugged in again to an outlet that is uh, grounded. And then you plug in this um, handle that you hold on to. And just sitting here, uh, I'm, and you, you will see an increase in the number as you shuffle your feet, but you just stand, sit still or stand still for a, a second or two and it bleeds off that static electricity and you get a consistent number. So we're in the range of uh, 0.1 uh, volts or 100 millivolts, which is actually quite a good number for daytime. It's not uncommon to see uh, much more than this uh, with the cords around you. So if you have uh, a number that's higher than this, and this is quite acceptable at this particular location, but if the numbers are higher than this, then what you would do is you would uh, move the 120 volt electric cords away from your legs uh, as far as possible. You can actually replace the, uh, the power cord for your monitor and for your uh, central processing unit or computer tower with a shielded version of the power cord that goes into these available from Radio Shack for about $9. It's the shielded version, part number 61-206. But generally, distance is your friend with electric fields as with magnetic fields and radio frequencies. You want to move these cords away from you as far as possible at the desk. So one of the things that's overlooked in many cases is high electric fields in the day and evening time from an ungrounded laptop. And what I mean by that is that the cord, the power cord for the laptop has two prongs on it, a hot and a neutral, but not a third prong, which is the ground prong that you have in laptop uh, power cords that are grounded. So this is the configuration that you want, not this. If this is what you have, then you can replace the power cord with a grounded one by going to uh, www.prontocharger.com, P-R-O-N-T-O charger.com. Give them the make and model of your laptop, and then they will sell you a uh, cord that has a grounded um, uh, plug on the end of it. Now to show you uh, what this does in terms of the electric fields, so I'm going to hold on to the body voltage meter here. And in this particular configuration, or where I'm sitting, uh, I have 1 1.8, 1 1.9 uh, volts, or 1,800 millivolts, which is actually a relatively high number for the daytime because of the cords in, underneath the floor here and around me. And that can, we really can't do anything about that. But what I wanted to show you is that 
when I hold this handle and I have the meter here, uh, and you can see that I have a 1.7, 1.8 volt reading. When I put my other hand on the laptop, that number doesn't change because this happens to have a grounded plug on the end of it. However, I'm going to show you what happens if we simulate what it would be like if you had a grounded, an ungrounded plug on this. And the way we can create that is to take this grounded plug on my uh, laptop power cord and slide over that one of these um, <clears throat> three to two uh, adapters or cheater plugs as we call them and you plug that in and now it's only two pronged and there's no ground on this. I'm going to plug this back in. Now the computer's back on power instead of battery but now you notice that when I pick this up even holding my hand uh, a foot away I'm up to 5,000 millivolts now from this laptop. And of course the cord is draped across my uh, knee. So when I put my hand on the laptop uh, to, to do work on it you know, all day, I have 10 to 12,000 millivolts now. And that's going to make me really tired after just an hour or so, or even less. So this is something that is overlooked. A lot of people have this situation. Uh, we highly recommend that you get this meter from emfhelpcenter.com and measure this for yourself. Just hold on to this and put your hand here and you'll see the high numbers. The solution, by the way, is not to put your feet on an earthing pad because that will make this number go down, but that doesn't solve the problem. Because what you're doing in that case is you're bleeding off this man-made voltage through your body and into the mat and off, but it's still causing harm uh, potentially to your cells. Uh, the, and the only reason why the number goes down is because one part of your body is, is at the same potential as the foot and that's not, uh, I'm sorry, between here and the foot, and that's not the solution. The solution is to ground the laptop, and then you won't have that high electric field in the first place. And real quickly, just unplug it. Let me see that low number again. Yes, okay. And to verify that we um, can eliminate this by not having the ungrounded situation, we'll unplug it. We'll take this plug adapter off. Plug it back in and hold this again and now you see that the number is back to what it was before, 1.8, and when I put my hand on here there's no change. That's your, tell, uh, that's your, uh, your way of knowing for sure that um, you're grounded. Now when you're using the body voltage meter it's very important that your ground circuit is working properly, that that ground line is wired correctly. If not, if there's a problem with the ground connection at all, then your readings on your body voltage meter will not be accurate. And Orem is going to demonstrate a little device called a ground tester, and it's a very good idea to use that, and you can get those at most good hardware stores. So the way that you can test for that is with a simple circuit tester, and when you plug this in, you normally see two amber lights, and the red light should be dark. That's a normal configuration. This is a properly wired and grounded outlet. Now there are different configurations with different models of circuit testers that you buy at the hardware store, but this happens to be the one in the middle for this model that says that this circuit is on and live with 120 volts of voltage. The second amber light here is the one that tells me that the ground is good. So what you're looking for is two things. Number one, that the center light is on, Actually, that doesn't matter in terms of measuring body voltage. The circuit could be off and you'll still get a good ground. But for testing, the circuit has to be on. And number two, this outer light has to be on, number one, and number two, bright, as bright as a center light. If the outer light is off, then that means that the ground is completely severed and this is not a, a grounded outlet. And then the numbers will not be accurate. But also, if the outer light is dim, that means that the ground is loose and you won't get accurate readings in that case either. So you want the outer light to be on and as bright as the middle one. Once you've verified that, then you plug this into that outlet, turn on the meter by moving this on, the switch to on, and then having it in starting in the two volt setting, and then hold on to this handle, and then you can get body voltage readings with your meter.